exploring zero DTE. We promised you we would take a look and here we go. Um, this is our first piece of research on zero DTE options. We have a bunch more coming, just so you know. <laughs> exploring zero days to expiration options. Let's go to the first slide. And I also have some notes to myself here, just so you know, so that I don't miss anything. All right, I'm ready. So with the growth in volume, strikes and liquidity of zero DT options, it's been the most requested research topic so far in 2023. Today we'll begin a series on these options to compare and contrast their tradable viability um, versus our typical duration. We're going, to, we're going to attack this from lots of different things. And by the way, you've probably been reading because there's a million people publishing articles on, oh, my God, no zero DT options are so big now, but they're not the VIX doesn't take them into account. So the whole market's screwed up and all the pricing's wrong. And it's like, no, it's not. OK, slow down. The VIX doesn't take into account, but the forward slash VX does. Mm -hmm. And we all use the forward slash VX. So our volatility measures are actually spot on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Well, that's a good headline for people. Yeah, it's a good right? headline, a nice, but don't for one second think anybody's missed thing anything. thing that the retail investor doesn't know that everybody else knows, and that's why they can't profit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, don't don't buy into any of it. Everybody, mm -hmm. everything's per priced perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the next slide. So, in this study today, we looked at the SPX, um, we looked at the intraday options, and we started with one day. We took February 21st, which is two days ago. And the reason we used that was because there was a 1% move intraday. Okay. And it's important for, for, for purposes of explaining um, why we chose this, because there's so much data in every day. But we chose this one day because we were up a percent. We we closed. We, we basically gave up a full percent. Mm -hmm. And that makes the discussion, you know, so much more relevant because it's a perfect day to look at that. So we did is we looked at um, the at the money put and call for the XPX options based on the opening prices from two days ago. We recorded the intraday options price data for the following options. For the zero DT, for the one day, for the seven day, the 14 day, the 21 day, and the 58 day. There wasn't a 48 day, so that's, I mean, a 45 day, so that's why we did that. We computed the following statistics. The high and low price is a percent of the opening price, the comparison of opening prices as a multiple of zero DT prices, and the latest, I'm sorry, the largest swing in one hour for each expiration. Like, how much risk were we really taking? And... Um, uh, and I think you're going to be surprised by some things because so why do you trade a zero DT option? Is it sell premium or to buy premium? I would argue that it's to buy premium. Okay, that would be you my would argue argument. that, right? What's that? You, that's that'd be your argument. That would be my argument. And I don't think I, you're and, alone. I, and I have a feeling. I don't think you're alone. I have I have a feeling like you're going to stick a knife in my back right now. I feel I have a feeling like you set me I'm, up. With I'm that not going to stick a knife in your back. Like, like 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 I feel like I was set up with that question. You were. <laughs> And you're going to see in one second why. Let's go to the next slide. So it's also important to understand the price action of why we chose February 21st to understand how zero DT options perform. Because zero, T, Z, zero days to expiration options, and by the way, Tony and I came up with that zero DT, just for the record, didn't exist now. Everybody uses it. Zero DT options will have drastically different results depending on price action of the day. So we must categorize the price action in question for this study. On February 21st, the range in the SPX when we started our study, a few minutes after the opening to the close, was just under 50 points, meaning that the expected move was breached by only a few points. The expected move that day was like in the high 40s, okay. or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. So here we get start getting to the meat. When the market goes against you, the zero DT options will lose all their value whereas a typical 30 to 60 day option has a modest decline of 10 to 20%. This is on a 1% move in the market, remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as these are SPX calls and they all opened on the high of the day, the zeros, the ones, the seven days, the 14 days, the April expiration, they all opened on the high of the day. At the low of the day, the zero days were worth zero. <laughs> okay, of course. The one days 
you know, they went down by 35%. The seven days um, went down by 64. The I'm sorry, daily they low. They had le- left. That would be that would be that's, like the, that, that's what they had left at the end of the day. Right, right. Um, right. 64% they had 30, left. Yeah, they had 64 percent left. The 14 days had 74 percent left. On a one percent down move, the 21 days had 80 percent left, and the April expiration, which is 50, had 87 percent left. So the so, difference. Go ahead. No. So the point you're trying to show here is, you know, if you are trading this from the from the from the long side, it's feast or famine. It's feast or is, famine, which is fairly obvious. Of on course, a, on a zero day option, how we look at longer dated options, give yourself time to be right. When you're completely wrong here, you're not completely wrong by a hundred percent on a longer dated option. That is correct. So the 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 again, the point here is that. Um, uh, the 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 whole takeaway from here is, you know, if you're, how much do you want to lose if you're going to be wrong? <laughs> and there's the percentages. I, I, I hate to look at it that way, but I get your point. So the inverse, you know, if you do the if you do the one week options, you would have lost thirty five percent. If you did the the April options, you would have lost thirteen percent. Mm. Okay, that's just how it works. The opening price as a percent of the zero DT price. So, you know, again, this is kind of already been stated, this 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 particular number here. Um, um, but I think the last line is more interesting, which is the largest hourly swing, which again, largest hourly swing. The market sold off in this case in the last hour. Mm-hmm. So in the last hour, the zero DT options lost 91%. Okay, now I'm just gonna give you a little bit of pushback and, and argue that if you were to catch that move correctly, then that put, if you're gonna make things completely equal since the market sold off, gives you a huge bang for your buck. I'm not gonna put a number to it, because I don't These know These are calls. We're gonna do puts in a second, so oh, you're gonna okay. see what the number is. Okay, I didn't know you were gonna do that. Okay, all right, okay. We're gonna see exactly what the number is. Okay. So these are calls. So, um, you know, these are these are what happen on your call positions. So if you go to the next slide, so these are your put positions. So this is what you're saying. If you caught this correctly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, how good was it? So on the in the case of the puts, if you bought the puts on the opening, um, you made two hundred and fifty five percent. I mean well, that's the daily highs of percent of the opening price. Mm-hmm. So basically you made uh, about 1.5, 1.6 times your money. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the best you can do on a one percent turnaround. Sure. Okay. Sure. And now, when you compare this to how the other ones did, the one day, the seven day, the fourteen day, the twenty one day, and the April expiration, those aren't that bad either. No, 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 no. You, you're, you're certainly getting. Okay. I mean, obviously, right, just just throwing it out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and. When you look at the largest hourly swing, <laughs> the takeaway from that is when you're directionally right, you make money. I mean, so that's a good when thing. When you're directionally right, you make money, <laughs> but you make significantly less money than you lose. Uh-huh. Can you go back to the first slide, John? I mean, not the first slide, the slide four. Okay, just take a look at this on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Largest hourly swing. This is what this is your worst case. 91% you lost. Sixty percent, you lost eighteen percent. I'll just do the first three, and mm-hmm. right, then thirteen percent. Okay, go to the next slide. On the win side, you made sixty-six percent, thirty-one percent, eighteen percent. So it was more challenging, but on the further days to expiration, you actually made more money in the largest hourly swing than you lost. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. Yep. yep. Um, let's go to the next. Oh, let me just see what he says here. Um, if you're buying puts in addition in anticipation of a down day, a modest down day with a 50 point high to low resulted in a profit of 155 percent. The initial put premium, if you got out at the high, and that's a very big assumption. Sure, if you sure, got out sure, at the sure. high, yep. Yep. okay. Let's go to the next slide. In terms of gamma risk, the zero DT, zero days to expiration puts carried roughly eight times the exposure as measured by the largest hourly swing than the 30 to 60 day options. And you can see this is the same, the same slide as the last slide, but you can see the largest hourly swing if it goes your way. Um, 
and verse so so you're just you're increasing your gamma risk by 8x mm -hmm. that's it, people just wanted to know like how much more risk am i taking mm -hmm. well you know if you're short 8 8x that's what i don't think that would surprise anybody that's no, just what no, it no. is right, right okay let's go to the next slide so we have two pages of takeaways here which is a lot of stuff the zero DT options have become more popular because of their allure of large wins relative to a small capital outlay. That's what Tony said. You bet a little, win a lot, potentially, on a big move. In this study, we showed that even in large intraday moves of 50 SPX points, the zero DT puts would have resulted in a gain of only 1.5 times the debit paid at best. That's buying the low and selling the high. This is due to the rich premium that they carry. And you can't blame them because, you know, who, who's going to give you a cheap premium for these? It's sure. not going to happen. Sure. The starting implied volatility for the zero DT options could be, and many times is, over two times that of the monthly cycle. So basically, you're paying double. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, I mean, essentially. You're, for that bang for your buck. You, yeah. You're paying double for that 8x opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's what we call pot odds. That's just the whole game. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide. The rich premium that zero DT is option does not necessarily mean we should sell them either. When the gamma exposure being eight times the monthly option, with the gamma exposure being eight times the monthly options, the risk will manifest when the market makes a huge move, two standard deviations or more. Although you can't play for those, they do occur a few times a year, and at that point, the zero DTs will behave very differently. We will continue the series by observing the zero DT options on days. Um, where the market makes those huge moves to see if the results change. Um, I think that... There's a good starting point. It is. I, I mean, for, for looking at zero-day options, I and mean, it's only one day that you're looking at. Um, I think we have a lot more research to do on the subject and maybe even come up with some sort of... I think the, the takeaway from, from, from me from this is if you do this a lot, you might catch lightning in a bottle. Yeah, yeah. And and unfortunately, I think the zero-day options, you know how penny stocks back in the day, you go 20 years ago, penny stocks were, were the rage because they were cheap to get into and they were moving like crazy. They gave an opportunity. Every once in a while, the market kind of shifts into an area where it gives you um, some opportunity for lower capitalized accounts. I think the phenomenon with zero-day options right now is giving that that opportunity to lower capitalized individuals and accounts. And I think from a buying standpoint, they're looking to catch lightning in a bottle because they really can't. Like you have a smaller account, a couple thousand dollar account, two, three thousand dollar account. It's very hard to sit there and try to make 20, 30, 40 dollars trading options. Although I think that's the longevity of trading. But what they want is instant gratification. Unfortunately, they don't want the instant pain either. That's the problem. Um, and I think that's why there's a lot of volume in the zero-day options. I do, too. I just... Um, but I think I'm unlike not, penny stocks, the zero-day options are here to stay. Oh, if we yeah. can come up with something where we can give our viewers a little bit of edge on a time frame or uh, certain volatility or something that we can give them, you know, that shows them a little bit better win ratio on their money, then I think we, we've come up with lightning in a bottle. I think what we're going to learn in the end is that it. I know we're going to. I know we're going to prove that it's incredibly random. Sure. And I. But what I think we're going to learn in the end is that it's fun, but it's maybe a little counterproductive to. Like you got to. You're going to have to pick certain It'd be spots. Be hard to sustain a living like that solo on zero DT. Right, right. I think that I think yeah. that's the point. Yep. Let's take a quick ninety second break and come back. We got more Tasty Live with Ojoy, your friend and mine, Mr. Scott Shedder. Next, Tasty Trade World Headquarters.